Hello everybody, uh, I wanted to share a quick message with you. Uh, this is not character, I don't normally uh, get on a video cam for these kind of things. Um, you know, but uh, I think a lot of us have felt uh, mixed feelings, some up, some down, about uh, the recent election in the United States. And, and uh, you know, I think the tendency is to uh, think about doom and gloom and think about things that, uh, you know, that 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 didn't happen or that could have happened that but didn't and uh you know but my dad sent me an email the other day and I wanted to share that with you I thought it was pertinent and it was wonderful and uh, these are words of wisdom by Ed Laritzen at Hugh Nibley and you know I think it's just the most important thing to realize and, and remember is is that God is in charge and everything uh, that is, happens uh, happens for a purpose and so I'm going to read this for you uh, for your enjoyment, and, and this is what we hear it, and it says, It is election night 2012, and I'm sitting here at my computer, listening to Governor Romney's concession speech, trying to come to grips with his defeat, our defeat. And into my mind comes three interesting thoughts, he, he says. First comes with the scripture, and in Doctrine and Covenants section 88, verse 73, we read, Behold, I will hasten my work in its time. So if the Lord's work is to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man, and if it's possible, if, that's, if that process begins by hearing about the church and seeing its members, then the sooner and the faster the greatest number of people can see and hear about the Latter-day Saints especially about the exemplary saints like the Romneys. The, the more the, the work is hastened, um, as we can see, and, as, and though the church has about 55,000 missionaries who are quietly and patiently roaming around, uh, roaming the world, hang on, roaming the world, knocking on doors, um, it says, the Lord has brought... Uh, the LDS governor and his LDS family into the very homes of millions of people around the U.S. and in the world via TV, radio, and internet for more than a year now. People who might have never received or accepted the missionaries or LDS neighbors, let alone have learned about this way of life that we have. But now they have listened and watched and learned, and many of them will likely become more curious and receptive to the missionaries in the future. And that also goes for many of the evangelicals, Protestants, and Catholics who locked arms with the Latter-day Saints, thanks in large part to Glenn Beck, during this long presidential campaign. The bottom line, the Romneys lost a hard-fought political battle, but they and the Church won, I believe, a decisive, long-awaited cultural and spiritual victory in opening the minds and hearts of millions. Another post-election thought says, be careful what you pray for. And I like this. this is, when I read this, it blew me away. It said, had Romney won, it is highly doubtful that he and his team would have been able to rescue the nation's wounded economy from the purposeful destruction that Obama has intentionally inflicted upon it. Obama having done so in order to fundamentally transform our free enterprise system into a socialist state. Had Romney won, the only possible way he could have saved the nation and its economy would have been to make deep cuts in the welfare and entitlement programs. Cuts that would have been branded murderous, discriminatory, and racist. And every turn by liberal mainstream media and the ever-increasing drumbeat of these accusations over the next four years would have given license to thousands, perhaps millions, of malcontents to take to the streets in civil unrest, a.k.a. anarchy. As such, Romney never ending, Romney's never-ending vilification in print and in the electronic media would have soon painted him and his fellow Mormons as enemies of America and all of the resulting antagonism, stress, and persecution of the church, both at home and abroad, as is over the next four years, right-wing zealots, not Christian conservatives, will likely become increasingly resistant, confrontational, and possibly violent. 
in response to the creeping socialism. Thus, social unrest may begin at the other end of the political spectrum, likely precipitating equally violent responses from the pro-socialist masses. And this foregoing scenario brings me to the third and final thought tonight, one which w was accomplished by the written word, this time in the form of a powerful metaphor by Hugh Nibley. He writes, I close with this. On the last night of play, the whole cast and, and stage crew stay in the theater until the small, or not so small, hours of the morning, striking the old set, if there is to be a new opening soon, as the economy of the theater requires, it is important that the new set should be in place, and ready for the opening night. All of the while, the old set was finishing its usefulness, and then being taken down. The new set was rising in splendor to be ready for the drama that would immediately follow. So it is with this world. It is not our business to tear down the old set. The agencies that do that are already hard at work and very efficient. The set is coming down all around us with spectacular effect. Our business is to see to it that the new set is well on the way for what is to come. And that means a different kind of politics beyond the scope of the tragedy which is now playing its closing night. We are preparing for the establishment of Zion. And that was written by Hugh Nibley. Nibley's on the Timely and the Timeless Classic Essays of Hugh W. Nibley, Provo, Utah, Brigham Young University, Religious Studies Center, 1978, page 302. So, you know, I think about some of these things and, you know, whether it really truly is purposeful or not, whether we've got just some guy, you know, who's not sure what the heck he's doing and, you know, acting like a teenager in the White House, uh, you know, kick the parents out and has the credit cards and they're running up a bill. You know, whether people believe that he, you know, he's, he's, he's doing that on purpose or, or whatever they happen to believe, it, do, it doesn't matter. Uh, God is in charge and he's ultimately aware of what's going on. And so really, it just boils down to which part is mine and which part is God's. What, what, what do we do? What is our part? What, in this whole grand scheme of life, uh, what, what side are we going to choose? And, uh, and whether we choose that side or not uh, will eventually depend on our safety and it'll depend. it will it will enable us to have continued safety so that's my thought for you today and uh, I truly do wish you well this weekend of the, the um, of uh, Veterans Day weekend as well want to give a shout out to the veterans and all those who have served our country honorably and that those who have done so willingly have given us the freedoms and given me the freedom to be able to sit here right now and share these thoughts with you. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.